And it means there's only one remaining holdout of a guy who's on his second contract. Nick Bosa is in his option year of his rookie deal, and he's holding out. And it's getting potentially more expensive, but the 49ers can waive all those fines if they choose to do so. And I would assume they will. Chris Jones, Zach Martin, they've got the non-waivable fines of 50000 per day. Chris Jones, three weeks in, over a million dollars. I mean, for what he's trying to get, it doesn't matter. He's trying to get $30 million a year, and he's currently at twenty. And uh, I think this is going to continue right up until they – begin their preparations Chris for week one against the Lions oh man I, you know I hope not because you will not we won't see the same Chris Jones they won't be as good on the defensive side of the ball you know he's a tremendous leader we know the kind of player he is there you know, that, that, that that's where I don't want to see that right I, I would hope they could find something you know whether it's like a Zach Martin deal or just extend the deal two or three years and a big signing bonus or whatever else we know, just like Zach Martin, Chris Jones is egregiously even more underpaid for where he is, let alone he's been the pillar of that defense for their three Super Bowl appearances. So that's where uh, th this is big. Th this is the D line. They got a lot of good talent there, but they got guys that are like, hey, we're waiting for some of them to take the next step or take over. He's the only real game plan. Wait, we got to stop him. What are we going to do? If they don't have him, that makes that defensive line look, look a lot less than, than what it really is. Yeah, you remove Tyree Kill from the offense. You've still got Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, exactly. and a great other pieces line. that right. will make it work. Right. You take out Chris Jones, who do you replace him with that can be disruptive, that can kick it in in key moments like in the AFC Championship game when it looked like the Bengals were going to drive down the field and win it, like in Super Bowl 54 when it looked like the 49ers were going to hold on and win it until Chris Jones freaked out Jimmy Garoppolo to the point where he didn't see a wide-open George Kittle because he was afraid of the ball getting batted back in his face like Jones had previously done. Right. Jones has a history of showing up when it matters most, and he's he's – yeah, you, know, you were saying it all last year that he was becoming one of the most dominant interior defensive linemen, even more so than Aaron Donald. And this is it for him. 29 years old, interior defensive lineman. This is it. This is the time to get paid. And the reason I think the Chiefs are resisting, it's kind of like with the running backs. They know they're going to regret this in a couple of years, but they need to do it now. Worry about the regret later. They got to pay this guy now. Because he's got maximum leverage, yeah. and I think they miscalculated what it was going to take to get him in. And this is this is what happens when you start. And I know Chiefs fans get upset when I say this, but I don't care. It, it's it's accurate. When you get these guys that are happily underpaid, they just assume that everybody's going to be happily underpaid, and then they encounter a guy who's not happily underpaid, who's not happy about being underpaid at all, and that kind of that, that's hard for them to deal with. Because they want this vibe where they can take Patrick Mahomes. And he's happily underpaid. So Travis Kelsey will be happily underpaid. And Chris Jones will be happily underpaid. And then you can use that against everybody. Everybody at the bargaining table. Who do you think you are? Patrick Mahomes? He's underpaid. Travis Kelsey's underpaid. Chris Jones is underpaid. They want to be part of a winning tradition. So you either want to be part of a winning tradition or you don't. And I, I think, you know, if you can make that happen organically and milk it you save a lot of money and you get a lot of great players for a lot less than what it would cost other teams to get them under contract yes yeah. no i mean they they got a lot of you know good things there this this is this is a good problem to have that oh okay hey uh, last year was the first year you know like you were saying it was like whoa there, there, this is the first time this is coming out of my mouth in a long time the best defensive tackle in football is not aaron donald it's chris jones that's what he was. I don't see the other thing, too, and, and I understand their stance, and I know we've hit on this before, but I don't see falling off the cliff or end of the road happening here with Chris Jones. I think he's proven he plays a ton of snaps every game. He's up there in what, as far as league leaders and playing snaps at defensive tackle. He, he loves the sport. Right. And there's no signs of him falling off right now. And, and guys like this traditionally don't just fall off completely. It's a little bit of a gradual, you know, downturn here. And this is one of the freakier guys we have seen to where, you know, I, I would think he's got another three, four years of really good quality football. 
and like these first two years, still superstarish type of quality football. So, and you know, you break down their roster like we're saying, hey, I love Mike Dana defense end and George Kyle Laftis. Hopefully he makes the the turn and shows he's a you know unbelievable first round pick. But in the middle of that defense, you know, Derek Noddy, hey, he's he's a good run stop and D tackle, but there's there's nothing there to look at that and go, ooh, wow. You know, that front four can hold hold down the workload itself. That's where they need Chris Jones. This is different. He's got them, I think, a little bit, you know, more in a tough spot than than even um, than than like Tyree Kill did when, when he wanted more money last year. Last week when Brett Veach, the GM of the team, said to the Kansas City Star, we have no intention of trading Jones. I believed it because they don't. They can't. You can't replace him. That would completely screw up your defense on the cusp of a new season if you remove Chris Jones. There's no one you can replace him with, and you don't have nearly enough time to plan for life without him. Well, one more just thing. Get this done. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sometimes you just got to yeah. – sometimes, yeah. sometimes you just got to – just like we say with Jonathan Taylor, you're in checkmate. Josh Jacobs, you're in checkmate. Kansas City Chiefs. You're in checkmate. I think so. Chris Jones. I think so, too. You got to just pay this guy. Yeah, hopefully they can find the, the right formula there. And here, well, last thing, just for like, because I know we got to go to break, but like, do, do we really, I don't know why, I just don't buy this player fine thing. Like, I don't buy it. I have a hard time thinking the Cowboys aren't going to skirt the rule or something, and they're not going to make him pay. Are we sure? That's a definite. It's definitive. mandatory. It's mandatory. How it's is in it the get, CBA. Yeah. It's mandatory and it's non-waivable. It must be removed from his future paychecks. So the only way to do it is you give him more money than what he wanted. At the end of the day, here's our deal. Oh, and you got to gross it up a million dollars to cover the fines. That's the only way you can do it. It yeah. can still be done. You just can't wave a magic wand and pretend the fines never happened. It's all about disincentivizing holdouts. There was stuff that was put into the latest CBA to make it harder for players to hold out. Because, you know, I say this all the time because people say, oh, you're 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 how dare you? You're breaching your contract. You signed a contract. Well, there's two contracts, your contract with the team and the NFLPA's contract with the league. And that contract gives the players rights to withhold services. The NFL made it more expensive, made it more difficult. It's just another wrinkle. It's another element. And sometimes guys care and sometimes they don't care. But this whole non-waivable on your second contract, yeah, that money is going to be gone. So you have to factor that into whatever contract you get from the Cowboys, that they're going to take a million of it because they have to. They're going to take a million of it back right off the top because they have to. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I know you're right. I, I don't know. It's just one where I, I don't know. I feel like we're going to hear a story. I that, mean, unless they're going to give him a briefcase full of cash. I, that's a, which, well, I don't you know, put any of that heard by those him rumors either. For years. I don't, Not about yeah. the Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> We've just, you know, yeah, there's no, other ways you can funnel money to somebody. That's, that's all I'm trying to say. That, that's just, to me, that's a hard thing to do. Hey, here's extra million dollars. A few ex- Here's four, million, four extra million dollars, but give us a million back. Like, I I don't. I don't know if I'm going to buy it. They're going to try to do good by their star guys. There, I, I, I'm just throwing out stuff here. I don't know this. I just, you know, it just seems fishy to me. I know how a locker room. We've works. always right. Look, there's always been suspicion about right. teams skirting the salary cap, and it's never. Well, there's been some proof of it from time to time. Time to there's time, there's been some teams yes. that have been whacked for it from time to time. Mike Shanahan's Broncos, frankly, on a day that that the political process is in motion to try to get the voters on the contributor committee to put him in, and it's, he's not the only one that's got the political process fully activated to try to become the finalist for next year. But they got whacked hard. I mean, they had multiple draft picks they lost over salary cap issues back in the late uh, 90s uh, as after they had won their Super Bowl. And, you know, they won two Super Bowls. Can't take those away. Take draft picks away. Doesn't matter. We won a couple of Super Bowls. And it wasn't as egregious and blatant as the briefcase of cash slipped under the table that we've heard other teams possibly have done. But how do you how do you ever how do you ever prove it? How do you ever even begin to prove that someone funneled cash to someone else? Yeah. How do you prove it? Yeah. If everybody keeps their mouth shut, you don't prove it. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.